yeah, looking forward to more to discuss here. <laughs> so that's all I got right now. Great. Yeah. Great. Hello everyone, we are here at Creative Space Gallery today, as you can perhaps tell. Thanks so much for hosting us. My pleasure. Anyway, we are here to kind of just unpack our most recent event or show, 45 past 7. If you haven't seen anything um, to do with it or if you missed it, be sure to check out our Instagram. We have some pictures there, some highlights, oh, here bits and pieces. Well. Anyway, we have two lovely people here. Osvian, as you've met, um, manager, <laughs> curator of Creative Space Gallery. And then we, of course, have Hafiz. Would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Hello, hello. Hi, I'm Hafiz Aliu3. I am a jack of all trades, I guess. Agreed. I've done a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, been in this field a while. So um, if you guys have watched or attended or been to any of our TAIL sessions, spelt T-A-I-L, yeah. it stands for Talk About It Let's with an exclamation mark. <laughs> That's great. Um, so this is basically a mini TAIL session. I think it'd be great if we call it mini TAILS. Oh, that's cute. I just had a visual. <laughs> so one thing that perhaps a lot of people don't see is the behind the scenes or don't hear about is how we put together shows and events. Maybe I should just talk a little bit about what 45 past 7 is. Yeah. In a sentence, it is a <laughs> live collaborative art show where you, the audience basically witnesses art being created in front of their eyes. These two people, lovely people we have here, are both involved, were involved in the show, curator of the show, we have our tech lead as well. I actually um, was intending to be one of the artists, so I, I submitted yeah. an audio um, piece. Mm. But I said, like, if I don't get the part, yeah. I would like to be involved in the production side of things, and you brought me in as tech lead. so. I brought in all the technical requirements. Yeah, so you you came into this whole picture a little bit later. I think the conversation mm. started with just us. Yeah. <clears throat> in fact, if I remember correctly, we met up for something entirely different. Yeah. And then at the end of it, Ozan is like, so 45 by 7. seven. <laughs> Do you remember that? Uh, I remember that. <laughs> I totally remember that because like it was such a magical experience as well mm -hmm. for me in 2017 when we first did, worked on the second installation of 45 past 7. It was a spin off the last one because mm. in the last one the artists were talking a lot about either birth or death because yeah. the theme was alive and mm -hmm. it was about coming to life. So I guess the, the furthest I can track the trigger to is after we're alive what comes next right and that's how mm -hmm. alinea came about yeah you know i remember when you first mentioned alinea oh no i think it was a written brief <laughs> I, I read it i was like how do i pronounce this <laughs> like is, is it latin I, I yeah it's latin. like is it like french a, a line a line <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a typo <laughs> i think this time around it worked out a lot better in the sense of the audience because mm. um, one of the aims that we definitely had in 2017 was to get our audience to kind of move around right. and this time around for 45 past 7 Alinea we didn't have to do much yeah. everyone was actually really curious and yeah. moved about so that's definitely like one of the visions that we managed to take mm. off I was actually very surprised um, I think within minutes the yeah. start of the show one person stood up and started walking around and that kind of led to others walking around pleasantly surprised. I would love to hear a highlight from the show that you had. The moment where you just went, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, for me, I was captivated by um, Kappa, mostly, the dancer. My eyes were stuck on him right. pretty much. And like when he started moving around, approaching the other boxes, mm -hmm. yeah, that was the moment where I'm like, something is happening here, and I'm 
glad I'm witnessing it right now yeah. and with other people like reacting and sort of following him as well. Yeah. And that was, that was pretty cool to see, yeah. I guess for me, I, I need to paint a picture first. We had, um, for the show, we had three boxes. Uh, one for the writer, one for the painter, and one for the dancer. The one that stood out to me the most was definitely sh um, sharing it with Hafiz as well, is when all three of them became connected. It was amazing in a sense because the music um, that Ian made was very evocative and very in tune as well, mm. where Kappa moved from the painter's box then to Rochelle's box, the writer's box. And it was amazing because it was almost like a social commentary, mm. um, how he was almost a part of the audience itself. Right but he was part of the performance. Hey, uh, are we part of the performance or is it still separate? Right. So it, I, I was having like this whole narrative in the back of my head. I'm like, oh my gosh, my gosh, my gosh. I think that um, that just reminded me of something. So after the show, Fike was there, right? Fike, I wrote in, hi Fike, if you're watching. Hi. I hope you watch our videos. <laughs> yeah. um, anyway, in a conversation that we had, we were talking about where we're at as an industry or just as creatives living in Brunei like how far are we actually pushing the boundaries do we still create to entertain the audience and to kind of appease them and please them or are we just creating based on what our soul wants to create you know and we had a whole conversation about that and like where 45 past 7 could go I guess that leads me to my next question for you guys. How do we find a balance between ensuring that we um, lead and guide the audience and ensuring that we're pushing creative boundaries? That's, that's a pretty tough question. Mm. Um, but for me personally, I believe that um, as long as the intention is there behind the execution, the planning, and everything. like, And I did this with all the artists, actually, in 45 past 7. It's, what do you want your audience to get mm. out of your process? Mm. Um, and for example, Rochelle was, uh, it's for me. I want to do my own self-expression. For Nadia, it was, I want that interaction with my audience. Mm. For Kappa, it was to captivate. So. I, I believe that once they, once we set an intention, mm -hmm. we naturally captivate because that communication immediately happens. If someone resonates with, for example, what a painter is doing, yeah. that energy just feeds off one another and the attraction mm -hmm. happens. Yeah. It, there's a little bit of science behind it. Um, but if it was just completely science based on action and reaction, then the magic of creation would be gone. Mm. So it's hard to say yeah. th what's the balance between that. It has to be just really organic. To me, um, staying true, that's more important to me. That all comes from researching. It's not much about like market research, but more like the geographical context of where we are. Social context. Yeah, social mm -hmm. context. Yeah. Just stay true and authentic, like what's in your heart, your yeah. soul. People connect to it somehow. Correct. Because yeah. we're all humans, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if it's Especially when you genuine. bring that into the equation, like we're all humans, so it's going to be relatable to yeah. someone somewhere. Yeah. With Alinea, mm -hmm. I feel like it's so raw and bare bones almost. like. Uh, the audience sees the process and the audience are a part of the process right. as well. It's not supposed to be like a functional thing. Like you're here right. to have an experience that is out mm -hmm. of the ordinary. I for one was really really nervous um, doing this 45 past 7 or this edition of 45 past 7 just because there were so many different elements mm. involved and I know you guys also perhaps were stressed. Yeah one point or yeah. another was there any moment where you thought this is not going to happen like this is just not going to work i will just crawl into bed <laughs> wait for it to pass um i think for myself 
I thrive off that energy a little bit mm. because it's like I don't want that to happen. But with this project, I don't know. It might be different for me, but I felt really relaxed. <laughs> oh, wow. I was just like, oh, this is going okay. Um, I mean, setup setup <laughs> is always a challenge. Yeah. Um, and I definitely was like, we're not moving fast enough. Right. I, I mean, for me. I think that was probably one of the biggest challenge. I always have this vision of like, smack bang, okay, we get there, unload, okay, right. we unpack, okay, yeah. we assemble. <laughs> In terms of setup, it took um, two days yeah. to set up. So we, the show was on the 6th, right? We bumped in on the 4th mm -hmm. um, and spent just two days building the boxes that you saw, kind of testing out lighting and everything. Um, Oh yes, there's one moment after the show, I think I was with you, for the writer's box, the glass house section mm -hmm. with the light shining through, mm -hmm. I saw um, the shadow of the, of words. the words. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was your intention, Yeah. right? And I didn't know, and I discovered that after the show, I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, well done. <laughs> but I know you also had a lot of concerns leading up Oh to yeah, the show. I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, like Osby, I thrive in that sort of headspace. Right. Like I need that anxiety for me to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to yeah. Yeah, it fuels me. I feel like if yeah. everything's too smooth. I would be worried. Mm. Yeah. I would be so anxious that yeah. I'd be like, when is something gonna hit the fan? Yeah. 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 Do you know that um, on the night itself? A lady from Moha turned up at the door when we were just about to start. Mm -hmm. uh, she came in with her phone with our permit letter on. She's like, oh, I'm just here to check things out, take some pictures, videos. I'm like, oh, that's fine. Come in, take a seat. So we were just about to go out. And then she turned to me and she was like, you know, you're not supposed to have any performances, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We met censorship. It's fine. Yeah, but you know, you're not supposed to have any performances. I'm like, um, but anyway, things were fine. <laughs> we really appreciate the support of <laughs> Home Affairs, Censorship and everyone. I think um, this experience particularly, meeting with Censorship, um, really opened my eyes and Chesney as well was there. But what I learned is that they are on our side. Um, I think it's important for everyone to know who's in the creative community that it just takes a little bit more communication. It might take a little bit more work and effort from your side, but generally they just want to see you do your thing. Where do you think you're at in your creative journey compared to where you were, let's say a year ago? Have you seen a change or a progression? I'm still on that journey, you know? I'm liking it, I'm learning a lot, especially like this year alone. I've been on the sort of practitioner side of things and lately I've been getting involved in the production side of things. So it's a good way to sort of look at the creative industry for real, you right. know, like the non-glamorous side of it. Mm. Not that it's glamorous anyway, <laughs> but like by next year, I'm I am foreseeing a good year, 2020. Yeah, I'm just gonna carry on and yeah. go harder than before. Great. Two hundred percent. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. It requires a lot of self discipline. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. And motivation out of like the depths of your soul. Mm -hmm. Gonna echo a lot of what you said as well because that's um, where I am at for my journey. I, I definitely say that 2019 has been one of the best years for creative space. Mm -hmm. We've been in operation for in, in four months, officially four years. Right. This year really taught us, you know, like how other disciplines such as, you know, business, mm -hmm. accounting, a lot of accounting, <laughs> really plays a big part. Administration, right. even HR, etc plays a part in being able to build something sustainably mm. because you know a business functions like a organism you know yeah. you kind of have to have the 
brain, the liver, the heart. Um, and I feel like uh, for me, my creative journey, I, I didn't actually stop and look at it until a little bit more recently. It was a good reminder to be grateful and to reflect more on basically how much have you done? How much have you contributed? Are you being too hard on yourself? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so now my focus is, you know, trying to foster how can we unveil how valuable what we're doing is. Yeah. Because it's very much so a part of our contemporary culture, first and foremost. But at the end of the day, and the next day, and the next decade, it's going to be history. So what are we doing today to create something that someone in the future can look at and be proud of? So it's our legacy, it's our heritage, um, and it's very important for us to be able to put down solid foundations. So right. I think where we can start is, yes, we really need that support because only if we have the support of our audience, our public, can we then say, this is valuable. And in the future, people will be able to see and go like, this is what the youth were talking about. And yeah. So a lot of creatives either have day jobs or have other projects going on. Even with Creative Core, um, all the members in Creative Core have outside projects going on. And it's a, not an easy task, as Hafiz has said. Um, running a gallery is not an easy task. I think not just in this climate or society, just in general, the creative industry needs a whole village to support it, you know? Yeah, it's important to remember that. Yeah, I hope we get to do this more often and talk specifically more about our projects and events, not just ours, but yours, yours yeah. or anyone else's really. Please let us know if you have enjoyed this conversation or if this is useful in any way. And for 45 past seven, bringing it back, we are continually looking for people to work with and collaborate with. So if you would like to be involved, please, please, please reach out to us. Thank you so much for watching. Comment down below if you've got anything to say. We'd love to hear from you. Shutterprone.bn, am I right? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> For Hafiz's photography work, creative.space.brunei is fine. Creative.space.brunei on Instagram. Um, and yes, we'll see you soon. Happy holidays, happy new year. So these were the cling film sheets yes. on the painter's box, yeah. correct? So um, Hafiz helped me and he did a really good job. We know that this one is the entrance. Um, um, so this is where Nadia popped out yeah. of the box. <laughs> Tearing down or uninstalling a bit of it actually took longer than I thought. It mm. would. But can we open these up yes. and have a look at them? Yeah, we can. still be able to restore it and it won't fall anywhere else. Right. Okay. And That's also right. to keep the dust out of it.